Shalom Aleichem, sweetest friends. This year should be a special schuss for Rav Zev Chaim Ben Chai Edel, Rav Yisrael Chomas Yadav, Kiel Ben Shalamis, Rav Yisrael Chomas Yadav, and for Rav Sheyao Mordechai Ezra Ben Ochavora, and if he did it by Pasi Dorachal, the Rambam in the first halach in the eighth parak of Bukhas Malachim writes that soldiers, when they enter the territory of the Goyim and they capture and they take captives, it is mutter for them to eat the veils and shreifas and besar chazir if they are hungry and if they don't find anything to eat other than this unkosher food. They can also drink the Ayneset. The Kiyashmur we learn. We have a tradition that when it says in the Pasuk, we brought the Malayim called to, this is referring to Chazir, they're even allowed to eat. In war, it's pretty shocking. A lot of people don't use halacha, but uh, they're allowed to eat even, even on kosher food, even Chazir. That is the halacha of soldiers. The Makor of the Rambam is the Sigin Kulin Yud Zayin and Aleph, who brought the Malayim called to, Afilu Katli Chazir, even pig, even Chazir, they're allowed to eat when waging war. That's what you're going to get houses filled with good, even this unkosher meat. However, there are a number of kashas in this Rambam, as delineated by a Gaon Adadu of W. Sikman, and um, I'm going to base myself on his uh, Torah. The Rambam says that one is only allowed to take this food if he's hungry, if the soldier is hungry, and he doesn't find anything else to eat. That doesn't say in the Gemara. Where does the Rambam get that from? The Ramban Takam Kedushim ala Torah, Perek Vav, Pasuk Yud, it's Cholek on the Rambam. And he says it's not true. He says that even uh, even if they're not hungry, even if there's no Pikuach Nefesh, it's mutter for them to take this uh, unkosher meat. And we have to understand, Pshat the Rambam, what's Pshat the Rambam? It's mutter if they're hungry. What, what halachic category is hungry? Now that you're unkosher food if you're hungry. So if it's Mutter, it's mutter, it should be mutter even if they're not hungry. If it's not mutter, it shouldn't be mutter if they are hungry. No. If they're not hungry, it's answer. If they are hungry, it's mutter. It's a svar. And what's the makar? It says, Ve'achalta. You can go in, and you can eat this unkosher food. So where, where, where does the Rambam get? No, only if you're hungry, only Bishan Sarabha, and look at the Maritz Chais and Kulin, who discusses this. A number of Achronim, Chemdas, of Pati Deschanan, Pati Zrachim, Bushches, Reyev, Roshan Yitimel, that Baz is Romeis to that here. Uh, ask from the Sigin Kulin. The Sigin Kulin says as follows. Revere me, ask the Kasha. What's the din of the uh, unkosher meat that the Jews brought with them into Eretz Israel? What type of unkosher meat? That in the Midbar, they didn't have to shecht, according to the Akiva. They didn't have to shecht. They can eat Basar Nechir even unshechted meat. But let's say they, that's in the Midbar. Let's say they brought this unshechted meat from the Midbar into Eretz Israel. What's the thing? Amos. So what are we talking about? Elam will be Sheva Shekavshu. As if we're talking about the seven years they were capturing Eretz Israel. Ashta now. Dabr Tameh is true. They're even allowed to eat a Dabr Tameh. They're even allowed to eat Chazir. They're certainly not allowed to eat the Sarnachir. In the Midbar, they were allowed to eat the Sarnachir. In Eretz Israel, in the Supik, if they, the meat they brought in, they were allowed to eat. But we have a Kabbalah Homer. If when they get into Eretz Israel, they're allowed to eat unkosher food, they're certainly allowed to eat the sarna chira. No problem at all. So, it can't be the seven years they're capturing Eretz Yisrael. al kind of must be that we're talking about the sarna chira, this meat that they brought from the Midbar, that wasn't shafted after the seven years. That's the Revere Mia Shaila. And other territories, not really, we're talking about the seven years which they captured Eretz Yisrael. Yishtru hu shal shal akum. What are we matir? We're matir the shalal of goyim. We're matir the unkosher food of the goyim. But the hulo ishtri, but their own unkosher food, we don't allow them. We don't allow them to eat their own anavelos and trefes. Therefore, we have a shaila about the sarn, their besar nechira from the midbar because that's uh, didhu, that's shalal didhu, that's, that's what belongs to them. 
It's only of the goyim that they're allowed to eat, but not of their own. So, what's the, what's, what's the halacha there? Since they're not allowed to eat their own kosher food, so what's the din of the sarnachir that they brought with them from the midbar? But it's really talking about the first seven years. And the Gemara concludes, take it. The Gemara concludes with the shayla. We don't know. So according to the Rambam, what does the Gemara say? That it can't be during the first seven years. There's an afkamin even during the first seven years in the first terrace. We want to bring Kabachomer. If they're allowed to eat pig, they're certainly allowed to eat the son of No. We're talking about Shalom, maybe the Shalom is Shalom B'Shas Ravon. They're not hungry. If they're not hungry, they're not allowed to eat on kosher food. So are they allowed to eat then the son of Chir? No Kabachomer. If they're allowed to eat kosher food, they're allowed to eat the son of Chir. So maybe the Shalom is Shalom B'Shas Ravon. That's enough Kamina. Rabbi Shalas Rabbon, they're not allowed to eat kosher food. Are they allowed to eat the sarni chira? So maybe the Rambam is going with the Vishnu Basra. Because this whole this whole union of uh, of eating. Only if they're hungry is maybe only according to Maskanas HaGemara. Because in the originally, the Gemara assume that they're even allowed to eat. They're even allowed to eat. Shalobashan's Rabbah. And then the Gemara was Matarates that. They're allowed to eat only Bishas Ravon. How does this work in the Sugya? Let's see. Because the Achronim say, Shachim Yaviezri and others, that the gather of the Heter is like the Heter of Yafas Torah. Like the header of Yafas Torah. And we talk in the next halacha, and the Rambam is about Yafas Torah. Yafas Torah, we'd rather not permit, but the mut of Sheikh would be Sartimus, the Shkutas, the Lechud, the Sarnavelis. Better they eat this meat, which isn't so, uh, isn't the Mahajan, the Mahajan, but at least it's kosher. At least we shecht it. Not by Sarnavelis. Not Mamashan kosher, so the Torah is Mantar Yafas Torah. But it's only connected to Yitzhahar, they have a taiva. And the same applies to our case. Eating the sun kosher food, it's only when they get hungry. And they have nothing to eat. And just like Yifas Toar is the only mutter a shivya that they take in captivity, so too here. It's only mutter that they take captive, in other words. In other words. The shal shalakum, the meat of the goyim. So, the Gemara's kasha was before the Chiddush of the Lishna Basra. And so it's the Ritchie Vegar, the Chasim Sofer said. The Gemara says, Amas can't be during the first seven years. Because if they're allowed on kosher food, they're certainly allowed to eat the sarnachir. The terror says no. That's only in Lishna Basra, in Lishna Kama. In Lishna Kama, we have a Kabbal Chomer. And that's even Shalom B'Shas That's even Shalom B'Shas So you can't say, oh, Nafkamina. That's only, that's, that's, that's even Shalom B'Shas You can't say, Nafkamina, Shalom B'Shas Because in Lishna Kama, we still don't know that they're only allowed to eat the unkosher meat when they're hungry. We don't know that yet. In the Lishna Kama, they're always allowed to eat the unkosher meat. So we have a Kabbal Chomer. If they're allowed to eat unkosher meat, they're certainly allowed to eat the Sarnachira. And here we don't distinguish hungry, not hungry. They're always allowed to eat it. What's the Chiddush of the Lishna Basra? The Chiddush of the Lishna Basra is that it's only like the Eishas Yifas Torah. And when, is the, when are they allowed to take an Eishas Basra? They're only allowed to take her in captivity. 
You're only allowed to take her Kenegad Yitzhahara. Trying to limit it. That's only when they take her Bashivya. And it's meat also. It's not ideal. But if they take it in captivity, then it's mutter. It's just like they're only allowed to take her when they're hungry, so to speak. So too, in the Lishna Basar, we were Makadesh, that they're only allowed to take this meat when they're hungry. So you can't say at the beginning of the Gemara, Nafkamina, Shalom B'Shaz Ravo. That's the Shalom B'Shaz Ravo. When they're not allowed to eat the unkosher food, are they allowed to eat the B'Shaz Ravo when they're not hungry? When they're not hungry, they're not allowed to eat the unkosher food? No. In the Lishna Kama, they were allowed to eat the unkosher food even though they're not hungry. Only in the Lishna Basra, then the Gemara was Mechadeh, Shechidish Gadol. And the Chiddush was that it's like it's 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 connected the uh, Eish Tzfas and they're only allowed to take her when they're hungry. They're only allowed to take this when they're hungry, and therefore the Gemara couldn't have said originally that it's an Afkamina Shalom B'Shas Rabban because it wasn't an Afkamina Shalom B'Shas Rabban. That was only Mischadesh in the in the in, in the second Teretz. So according to the Chassan Sofer, Rabbi Kiva Eger, the Rambam says, gets this Chiddush of, you only allowed to eat if they're hungry, from the Gemara, from Yerav. The only problem is the Rambam doesn't seem to pask in the Lishna Pastor. Because the Rambam doesn't say that they're only mutter to eat what belongs to the Goyim. They're not allowed to eat, it's, 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 they're not allowed to eat the unkosher food that belongs to them. The Rambam doesn't pask in that. Or the Ramam is not passing in the Lishna Basra. To say the Ramam gets in Yura from the Lishna Basra and the Ramam doesn't pass in the Lishna Basra is difficult. Look in the Minchas Chinuch and Tavkuf Chavzai and the Yad Melech and the Rosh Yosef. And also the Ramam says only Chalutzei Tzava, only soldiers. So it's Mashma only the soldiers and not for the rest of the people. Look in the Meiri and Chul in there. Bas here in the Rambam, in Cheschinuch that we mentioned, Tavkuf Chav Zayin. So what's the Kash of the Gemara? Rav Yirmi had a very good Shiloh. Rav Yirmi's Shiloh was, the Gabi Sharam, where it says, oh, we were Kabbalah Chomad, they're allowed to eat the unkosher food, they're certainly allowed to eat the Sarnachir. No, Rav Yirmi wasn't asking about the soldiers. Rav Yirmi was asking about the Sharam, there we have no Kabbalah Chomad because they're not allowed to eat the unkosher food of the Goyim, so they're allowed to eat the Sarnachir. What's, what's, what's the Gemara Tameya? No, we don't want to tell the Rav Yirmi is talking about Shara. That's what the, uh, the Klichemda says. That's his Kasha. Talks about Nashim. What's the mean of Nashim? They're not, uh, they're not eating unkosher food. So they are eating the Sarnachira. What they brought from the Midbar. What do we have to say? We have to say, what the Gemara said in the first Teretz, in Teretz Kama, that they're only allowed to eat the sun kosher food in the first seven years. And therefore, Birmiya Shaila was after the seven years. They're only allowed in the seven years. And the unkosher food. And therefore, Yirmi Yashah was after the seven years. But now the question is, how they can have unkosher meat after seven years? How they can have the Sarnachira after seven years? What, what sort of question is that? Is the Sarnachira that lasts them seven years? The food lasts? Maybe they have freezers? And it just hung around there for seven years? That's what the Vash asks on this sugi. Not only that, he says in the Gemara, and the Gemara doesn't seem like that. Says, the Gemara doesn't seem to like this idea of Lachar Mikam. The Gemara says, Amos, what are we talking about? If we're talking about the first seven years, that's what the Gemara said. We have to be talking about the first seven years, right? But it can't be. He says, they're allowed to eat unkosher food, they're allowed to eat chaz, they're certainly allowed to eat the Sarnachir. It must be after seven years. So the Gemara, you see, isn't so happy with the after seven years, because the Gemara really wanted to start with the first seven. We just had a problem with that. It's very dachuk. It was dachuk to start with, and it's dachuk at the end. 
Ayin Shomri Arisra, Ayin Lepri Chemda. Maybe that goof is what the Gemara is telling us. That the heter is only the soldiers. And therefore, they're only allowed to eat the unkosher meat for the first seven years when they're capturing. And that's only the soldiers. And then what's going to be the nafkamina? So the nafkamina is of our shaila for women who aren't engaged in war. So it really is. It comes out then, lacha mikain, there's going to be no besar mechir or so what's the Shaila? Since we're talking only about the Sheba Shekavshu, that means we're talking only about the soldiers, the din and the soldiers, there's going to be an Afkamina Basar Nechira for the women, because the women are not allowed to eat the unkosher food during the seven years. It's only for the soldiers when they're capturing. And therefore the Afkamina is for the Basar Nechira. For women, practically speaking, Shaila's going to come up for women during the first, at the beginning, when they still have Basar Nechira coming in from the Midbar. That answers the Aris Vashas Kasha. How could it be that they meet still after seven years? How did it last? The answer is, no, it's the first seven years, and it's for women who aren't waging war, because in the, in the Teretz Kama, the Gemara is learning that there's an Afkamina for Nashim for Besar Nechira. For non-soldiers. So when the Rambam Paskins only chalutz eitzava, only soldiers are allowed to eat. And who's he passing like? He's passing like this the first heritage of the Gemara. Because according to the Teretz Basra, according to the Lishnakam of the Gemara, the Lishna Basra of the Gemara, what's the heter? The heter is the Bishalal Akum. And Rashi brings the Pasuk, Ve'achalta Shalal Oivecha. That's a din in Macholas Asuras. They're allowed to eat on kosher food. So that applies even to non-soldiers. So it comes out then, if you learn the Gemara deeply, then we've already seen you learn a lot of things. But in the Lishna Kama, it's only for the Yehetar, only for the soldiers. And Lishna Basra, it's a Heter Machal Sasuras, it's a Heter for everybody to eat on kosher food. And since the Rambam Paskins, that it's only for the soldiers, the Rambam Paskins is Lishna Kama. Then how come I've said before, I don't know, like the Rabbi Kivega and the Chassim Sofer. Ramas Paschal and the Lishna Basra, that means only if they're hungry, as we prove. No. Ramas Paschal is like the Lishna Kama, therefore it's not only if they're hungry. Now, like the Lishna Basra, that said that if it's only if they're hungry, because it's connected to Asian Sufras Toar, only if they have a taiva, just like only if they have a taiva for her, only if they have a taiva for this food, therefore it's only if you're up, that's Lishna Basra. As we explained before, but not the Lishna Kama. Lishna Kama is even if they're not hungry. The Rama Pasan like the Lishna Kama when it says Chalut Tzava. If the Rama Pasan like the Lishna Kama, then it's even if they're not hungry. So where does the Rama get that they have to be hungry? Till they close. We also have to understand what the Rambam says: the Yich B'shum the Yeshvu man. They have to capture it and they have to take captives. Why do they have to take captives? What does that have to do with eating the sun kosher meat? So in the Bar Miriam and Chalik Bays, Tarek Vab, Allah Dalid, he writes the Din Shalo, the Din Chiyuvi Shalaki Chasmamon, the Chlal Din Shevi Shalanoshin, the Chalosan. So included in the Din Shevi is taking the people and taking their stuff. Ah, it's got to be very good according to Lishna Basra. But it's a Din in Achila Sholo. He said the Lishna Basra is a Din in taking their Sholo. You have to take the people, you have to take their stuff. And we said in the Lishna Basra, uh, Rashi brings, that they, they're taking captive both the, the people and the food. We prove that the Ramam says that it's only talking about the soldiers, and that's the Lishna Kama. So if it's the Lishna Kama, where does the Ramam get that they have to take captives from the enemy? What does that have to do with, with, with eating uh, 
Eating unkosher food, taking captives from the enemy. Does that have to do with anything? We also have to understand that the Ramban, in his Perush al Torah, argues with the Rambam. The Rambam holds that the Heter is in all wars. The Ramban holds it's only in Eretz Yisrael. And there's a proof for the Ramban that we only find the parsha of Hagalah by Mohammed's Midjan as being of doing Hagalah on the Kalim. Because if it's Mohammed's Eretz Israel, the Kalim has Sirim also with it. So this whole din, according to the Ramban, only applies to Eretz Israel. So what's, what's Pshat it? According to the Ram, Ram, Rambam, that you have to do Hagalah on Mohammed's Midjan? Unkosher food is mutter. Why do they have to do Hagalah on the Kalim? And what's the sort of the machlokas between the Rambam and the Ramban? That the Rambam holds that the heter of eating kosher food is all wars. And the Ramban holds it's only Mulchemus Eretz Yisrael. Look in the Yorchadash to Psachim, and Gimel Amit Beis, Slach, Leibari Ein Chulin, Arsugia, Shut Beis Yitzchak Yorodei Chelek Aleph. Simon Mem Dalad Oschas and Chelek Beis, Kofiya Dalad, Yedalad, and in the Kli Chemda, many other people. So that's our, that, that's our Zunzer Arbit, that's our Avodah. Now that we, uh, we went on our Blitzkrieg, on the Rambam, Siyat Tishmaya, and we asked Kashas, we have to defend, we have to be the Rambam's lawyer, and uh, make sure the Rambam comes out Gishmak, as the Rambam always does. So I thought it's Baruch should just give me the koach and the moach and the simchas chaim and the means to continue the shiurim. And hopefully we will see the flow, smitaras Hashem. In the next year, hopefully, we're going to discuss uh, as Agdama, the union of uh, how much money to spend on mitzvahs. And then hopefully get back to our main topic. Shalom, shalom. Sweetest and most beloved friend.